Hi guys! Last week I got to go and see one of the flight controllers for the Apollo missions give a speech. Bizarrely it was in a business park about three minutes from my house. <laughs> His name is Sally Vagot and if you ever watch Apollo 13 or if you've seen Apollo 13 he's the one that's like the Odyssey is dying. From my chair here this is the only option. He is 78 now and he spoke really, really well. He was really intelligent. You could tell just how intelligent he was by just how much knowledge he had in his head about these missions that he'd done. The main purpose of his talk was about Apollo 13. He was the flight controller for Apollo 13 and he had to make the decision to shut the reactor valves to two of the fuel cells, which meant that they couldn't land on the moon. That was his decision. He spoke a lot about how much he doesn't like the Russians and how primitive, I guess, their spacecraft were compared to the American spacecrafts. He told a lot of anecdotes about working in mission control, what that was like, how useless the flight surgeons were. He mentioned one occasion where they were doing simulations and they simulated one of the flight crew having a heart attack and the flight surgeons didn't even notice. He spoke a little bit about the pressure that they were under from John F. Kennedy mentioned that he wanted them to be on the moon by the end of the decade and what risks they had to take to try and achieve that. There were a lot of other anecdotes that he told that I can't remember right now. He must have said the word anecdotes at least 30 times during his speech. Another thing he made a point of mentioning was the artistic license that went into making the film. He mentioned that he obviously doesn't look anything like the guy who plays him in the film. I don't know if you've seen the film so I'll just briefly explain that one of the astronauts who was originally meant to fly on Apollo 13 is exposed to German measles and can't fly and his replacement in the film is portrayed as kind of not really knowing exactly what he's doing, not being a very good pilot. In real life, apparently, it was nothing like that. He was probably better at his job than the original astronaut would have been. He also mentioned some of the funny coincidences, like all the ways that the number 13 surrounded that mission. It launched at 13.13 on April the 13th. There were a lot of other legitimate ones, but my favourite one was that the phrase German measles has 13 letters. He gave us his book, which is really difficult to get hold of, apparently. I didn't know this. Um, it's called Apollo Week on Genua Lifetime. It's got a rocket on the front. And it also has a CD-ROM in the back which has like audio clips of Mission Control and a 60 minute speech that he gave somewhere else. More than three hours of NASA tape audio. That's a lot. So I'm excited to read that. There was a Q&A after and then we got to meet him and get our picture taken with him. We are getting the picture emailed to us otherwise I would insert it now but we don't have it yet which is annoying. But he did make me stand in the middle of the picture. Me and my mum went we were going to stand on the side of him. And he was like, no, no, you go in the middle, you're short. I was taller than him. But it was definitely a really, really cool experience. I can't believe I've met someone who worked on Apollo 13. That's just weird and bizarre and awesome. And now when I do watch Apollo 13 again, I'll know that I've met that guy. And he told me I was short. Hope you all had nice Wednesdays and I'll see you all next week. Bye.